Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. And I said, well, you got it in there. You can bloody well get it out. What have you got today for us, Mike? Well, this, this, I'm just concerned about what you had to put in there to try and get out. Uh, this week, I've got a story about a new job opportunity that prefers you to work from home. And then we even have a game that you can play on with. And then we get all scientific in that science that is. But on screen now, you can see our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And there's names of people who have dropped us a line or a bump on the bottom of the screen. Go along. It's time for Lee and the Showbiz. Did, were you a fan of Ella the Day when she was on UK Drag Race? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit, little bit of, of a fan out of drag. A little bit of a stirring in the loins. Did you? Mm. Filthy beast. Well, you're going to be very excited because um, Ella the Day is going to... Give me. Well, she might do. Ask her husband first. Well, so um, they're set to do something that apparently no drag queen has ever done. Put their dick inside you. No, that's um, not true. Is that not true? Have you had a, a drag queen's dick inside you? Okay. Do you want to share who it was? Is it somebody we know? Is it somebody famous? No. I'm not saying it's, it's definitely not somebody you know. Oh, okay. Um, she's launching a unique new project. Okay. So out of drag, they're called Nick Collier. Mm-hmm. In drag, Ella of a Day, who got to the final in um, season three of Drag Race UK. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to be fronting a brand new fitness website with a twist. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some pictures of them here. Um, obviously, what you know, dressed as as Ella of a Day, and mm -hmm. then then Nick. It's going to be called Fitty, F I T T I, and it's the okay. new site which offers up. It, two separate exercise plans, one based on Nick, mm -hmm. with his top off, as in, in boy form, and then the other on Ella of a Day in drag form. Mm -hmm. um, so, basically, what he's kind of saying is, obviously, I do drag. Sorry, I, oh, did, I, did you I, I, to, I was, I was back I, in the room? I got a, I got a bit of... Um, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, he lives, most of my life I live as Nick, um, so I just thought it was really exciting that I can do these, the, this, this kind of, like, split, exercise um so it, co it accommodates everyone at every level and um he says i'm just really excited there's nothing like it i don't think a drag queen has ever, ever done anything like this before let alone somebody from the lgbtq plus community it's going to be like having a great party not really realizing that you're exercising i'm afraid i do realize that i'm exercising um and that's just him it's fit just him buff um so you can choose whether you want to do Nick Him. exercising <laughs> uh -huh. or Ella of a Day exercising. Okay. Um, and he said, well, to be fair, I wouldn't recommend wearing a corset to do sit-ups. So that's me out. Um, well, because it's sit-ups. <laughs> and a corset. All right. Um, okay. yeah. <laughs> that's me out because it's a sit-up. <laughs> and a corset. Um, but it is possible. Um, in the, wor the workouts, I'm literally doing sit-ups and side planks in a corset in all of my tights and a wig. I mean that's why it's fun. So if if this is something that you that the sound fun, um, you can it's it's out now. Okay. It's it's live now. It is fitty f i w t i, and you can type that into your little Google search or search engines of choice, and uh, crack one off um, to to whichever one you want. Are you going to try to bookmark it before we go on to the next story? Yeah. Fitty. F i t t i. Is that correct? Yes. F I T T I. Have that for a little set, little little self time with yourself um, later on. Don't think that's what it was trying to advertise. No. Well, it's all capitals. F I T T I. Not not baby baby nappies. Baby nappies. To clarify the difference between baby nappies and adult nappies. Sportswear? Nappies. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll send you the link later. It's okay. We're just in the middle of a show. It's fine. Um, okay. Well, yeah. We're ready for the next bit of showbiz news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crack on. You'll be very excited about this. All right. I'll believe you. You're still looking for his wrinkle, aren't you, on, online? Anyway, viewers listening at home while he's, while he's setting up his next wank, um, Cher, is, Cher is announcing a Christmas album. It's coming. It's happening. 
It's her 27th studio album and will be released in time for the festive season. Um, and she, you know, she's never done a Christmas album before. I'm having a stroke and I'm welcoming it. She's, <laughs> she's <laughs> never done a Christmas album. Can you believe that? That Cher has never done... I mean, look at the state of that cover. That is, that is some cheap photo editing. So there's three covers. Okay. There's this one. There's... Do you know what's really irritating me about that cover straight away? Her reflection in the baubles is wrong. Is it? Because they're behind her. Okay. And they're both reflecting the, f the same view that we can see, so they can see the front view. Right. Perhaps you should point, perhaps you should let her know that. Oi, Cher, what's going on? Because that should be the, the back side of her. It's the jeans that are, are irritating me more, the way they irritating, kind of gather up at them. the... <laughs> no, I don't want them. The gathering up at the bottom, the very, very sort of, sort of, yeah. Um, so there's three covers mm -hmm. that you can choose from. Um, she's based... Oh, so we've got... This is slightly better. She's kicking water. Why is that? It's snow. That's water. It's slush. That's water. So she's, you know, I'm having snow fun. Um, and then there's the final cover, which is a little bit more appropriate Christmassy, I would imagine. She's on a she's on a an ice log or something in the floating in the an ice log. An ice log. Yeah. Um so she's explained that the Chris it's called Christmas. And it will feature her duetting with duetting, 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 okay, with other singers, which is something of a rarity because she Nobody basically doesn't really do do duets. Um, she said, "I'm really, really excited because there's a million people on it." She said, "I'm going to do. I'm happy to do that. I have to do it." This was a last minute thing. I can't drop any names, but they're special, all of them. It's a sheer Christmas album, bitch. It's not your mother's Christmas album. Whoa. Um So, yeah, so it's going to feature Can you people. apologise to the people? No, I'm not. I refuse to. <laughs> I refuse because actually people like that. Name I've had, person. I've had, you, I've had. Right, messages from you. Messages from people saying, please do more share. Um, In your own time, not on TV, I think. The, right. the, <laughs> there's going to be appearances by Darlene Love. I'm not sure who that is. Michael Bublé. Oof. It's a Christmas album. It's got Christmas to be album. Tiger. Cindy Lauper and Stevie Wonder. Cindy Lauper. Mm. That, that's the name that jumped out there. Yeah. Set to release on October the 20th. So not Very that soon. far off. Yeah. And it'll be just a first... Just in time for Christmas. Just in time for Christmas. It'll be a first album of original material in 10 years. Following oh, closer material. to the tree. Original. So, so it, it doesn't sound alongs. like it's a cover version oh, album. No. So it's going to be like, Who shares Christmas bitches? Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Oh. Um, the uh, last, last song that she did that was original was out of burlesque. Was it? Mm -hmm. Apparently the last original material album was in 2013 with Closer to the Truth, which I think it had... Um, which is any of her songs, really. Um, Woman's World or something like that. It's a woman's world, bitch. Um, so that, that's something to look forward to, isn't it? It is. You know, every year how, we, how people wheel out Mariah and I instantly think about, you know, driving my car off a cliff. Yeah. I think that the Cher album's going to do that. You do, I mean, we I had the, she did the over. Cher Abba album, Cher Abba. But, yeah, Shabba. but that, wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't played that much. No, and it was awful. Right, um, I'm just concerned that this is a Christmas one. And people are going to play it because it's a Christmas. But for that, like, it's a very short period of time in the year. But still, it's that. And then it's right. gone. As soon as I hear, I'm thinking, drive it's, my car into it. Well, a... you know, that's what, that's what you have to do in an artist now, is if you can do a good Christmas album, then you can, it's retirement don't check do a, time. They don't do a good Christmas album. Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You is not don't a good poo -poo Christmas song. do it, Mike, before you've heard it. Wait I've until heard you Mariah hear Carey's song. No, wait until you've heard Cher's Christmas album. We all, we, everybody knows it's not going to be good. It's going to be Christmas songs with a vocode and a disco beat. And Michael Bublé. Oh. See? Yeah. You haven't thought about this, have you? No. Anyway, that's it's something to look forward to. It's beginning to look a lot like, whoa, it's Cher, bitch. Cher must. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> it's excellent. Anyway, so, um, something else to look forward to. Not till next year, this. That's sweet embrace of death. Beetlejuice 2. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's piqued people's interest. Yeah, yeah. So, Beetlejuice, the original film, it came out um, kind of like mid-80s. And it's all about a couple who die in a car crash. 
sounds cheerful, come back to the house that they live, which is then bought by a, a family, and uh, Beetlejuice is the ghost that is supposed to try and help them get rid of the family. Um, Rino, Rino, <laughs> Winona Ryder plays their teenage daughter. This is a picture of the new cast. The original film grossed $74.7 million at the box office, which okay. is massive. Mm -hmm. Also had a Tony-nominated stage musical, yeah. um, which had four-year run. Um, Beetlejuice 2 um, features the original cast. Um, so we've got Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, Jenna Ortega, Monica Bellucci. I'm excited it's Catherine O'Hara. Yeah, but not the couple and um, they're not coming back for it um and um so it's going to be released on september the 2nd 2004 no that's going back in time <laughs> that's weird 2024 okay so next year yeah next year that's your lot beetlejuice beetlejuice say that too many times now but thanks for that Lee. always good to know that beetlejuice is coming back beetlejuice anyway stick around because next is mike and the buzz watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's get ready to find the innards of the internet as it's Mike and the Buzz. Are you a member of any clubs? Just the Fun Times attendance. Club. The Fun Times Club. Yeah. Not like playing Scrabble on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> uh, I know I'm not. No, don't do any club activities. I don't like to be penned in, man. I just want to be free. <laughs> what about groups of people that have similar interests? It's not necessarily going to take a club, but you know, just having a, a group of people. Let me share this. Okay. On Facebook, uh -huh. I'm in a group uh -huh. called yeah. Dudes with Dolls. <laughs> and we post pictures of Barbies. <laughs> Like, You're not doing that ironically either, are you? No, I, sh I really am. <laughs> <laughs> Dudes with Dolls, check it out, people. I only know that because you've, you've tried to log into it from the Chewing the Cud account. No, I haven't. When have I tried to do that? Why do you think I've brought that up? <laughs> oh, I get confused sometimes when I keep having to go through between things. Uh -huh. No, I noticed. <laughs> yeah. I was hinting. That's what I thought. Oh, hinting. okay. Yeah. Yeah, shame. I'm not shamed by it, Mike. Good. I Don't embrace be... my Barbie fetish. Fetish. <laughs> not fetish. <laughs> my, my Barbie <laughs> appreciation. Yeah. Fetish. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is a story about a couple, well, that were exposed during their fun time activity. Oh, okay. By a member of EasyJet crew. Oh. Okay. As they were 30,000 miles up having a quick, you know, what's it in the toilet? They were doing the Mile High Club. In the Mile High Club. So, yeah. Oh, look at that. He's not happy with it. Oh, he's... Oh, oh, oh my God. The, the, like he's never seen a couple of people bumming each other in the toilet. Heterosexual couple. It could be bumming. That's why he's doing... Oh. <laughs> he's a vagina. Oh, my God. You think he saw his belly? <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine it's an... Ex it, it, that's... Pretty much a regular thing. On if an you're easy a... jet flight, though. That's on a small an easy toilet. jet flight. It's a small toilet. Have they paid for that space? That's so right now that you have to pay to pay. Oh. Um, and breathe. And... Oh, okay. Yeah, no, on an easy jet flight, and basically they, they opened the door because it, it looked like it was open. Oh, uh, was it and... Was it going boof, boof, boof? No, they, didn't, they knocked the latch, so it was oh. openable. So the crew member went, oh, let's have a look, and they were at it. Was, was the man. Like, was she like on the on the um, sink, and was he like going <laughs> on her? No, <clears throat> no. She was propped up against the the wally part. Oh, okay. Would you like to see some pictures of them actually? <laughs> Are they actually? Have you got pictures of them? <laughs> I can show you on my phone because I yeah, can't show Yeah, let me see. Them. I'm intrigued by her, the space available and the position that. Like, can... How have you managed <laughs> to do that? Who took the pictures of them? The, um, so the people on the plane, so when it happened, the plane erupted into cheers of, of yay, because uh, it's an easy jet flight. Uh, where was it flying to? Have a guess. Was it Alicante or Benidorm? 
Bella Medina, that kind of place. <laughs> Bella Medina. A local place. Um, so my, my, I've just got a pending screen. So we'll just oh, say yes. Send, I don't send know. it to me later. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> I think they did it on. Well, obviously, they did it on purpose. purpose. It's like they, I, want, I think they, they wanted to the toilet together to hold hands and fell on his cock. I think they wanted to be found out. Okay. Yeah. I think that was their plan. Yeah. Maybe they're clickbait. Clickbait. Yeah. Well, I hope he recovers soon. Yeah. From his um, experience and trauma of seeing a vagine. Um, talking of shock and trauma, prank phone calls. Okay. Right. Okay, I'm aware of those, he says. Ever partaken in a prank phone call? Yeah. Um, there used to be this thing once where in the back of like a magazine, there was these n numbers that you would give to somebody, say, oh, this person's phoned you. And when you phoned them, it was like a recording of somebody having a rant. You had to pick a really gullible person to do it. And I, oh, I won't spill your coffee. Um, and I did, I did do it on a, a colleague at work. Okay. I didn't like her. Um, and I found it quite amusing. Because she was going, bruh, 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 bruh. and this obviously always was going, bruh, 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 bruh. okay. Um, so this is a story about a prank um, from someone in Australia, right? Okay. Who's put someone's phone number up on lampposts, mm -hmm. saying, would you like to win $100? Give me your best Chewbacca impression. Oh, and then that person's number. And that person's number. Um, so she's getting swamped with phone calls of people doing a Chewbacca impression. I wouldn't imagine she's very happy about it. So this isn't the first time this has happened. Oh. So someone else in Australia did the same thing. To her? To another person. Oh, OK. And the person that it happened to said, oh, it's very funny, ha, ha, ha. If you see a poster, take, take it down for me, but feel free to give me a call and, and do the back impression if you find the poster. Right? She has gone, the other, uh, other way of doing things? Mm. If I find out who you are and you're phoning me, I will sue you. This is harassment. Proper, I'm going to say full Karen. A full Karen. Full Karen on it. Um, you're asking to speak to Chewbacca's manager. Um, but she's literally, anybody that phones up, she will rant at until it's threatening with legal action stuff. Well, all they're doing is going, Rawr. and not winning $100 for that. And then putting the phone down. Because <laughs> they think they're entering a competition. Okay. Right, so they're innocent as well. It's the person that's put them up, and she's asking people, if you know any who's put them up, please let me know. There's a one easy way. Change your number. Ring the phone company. Yeah, it's. Can you change my little number for me, please? Or who is it you pissed off that much that they wanted to annoy you? Yeah. Because that's going to be it's going to be a type of person. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Probably a husband. Possibly a parent. Something like that. Or just someone that's walked past her in the street, found out a number, and gone. Well, it's, it's going to be a friend, isn't it? It's going to be somebody close who has a number. It's just someone that's got a number, though. It doesn't have to be a friend. No. A disgruntled work colleague, maybe. Uh, uh, have we any... Have we any... <laughs> uh, any... Any... Have we any... Any French people? Have we, <laughs> have we any... Any French accents? What is, this, what is the term? Have we any audio on, on people? Audio. Um, no. 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 Well, you did an excellent Chewbacca impression, anyway. You have. Say again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare use that for anything else. <laughs> and if you could do a cheery impression, please feel free to share it with us at the Good TV on social media. <laughs> and that brings us nicely to our story of the week, where um, a minor TV personality has been caught doing a Chewbacca impression. <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have enough um, fluid. Hang on. Okay, you're going to lubricate. Oh, no. <laughs> you thought you'd be so clever. And then he died. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, aspirated. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Getting more like a cow. It is. Who <laughs> <laughs> well, was Cher doing a Chewbacca? Scary, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's better as a Chewbacca. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm just there's a new job opportunity available. Is there? Yes, uh, one that encourages you to work completely at home. Is this what is this the story we're doing now? Yes. Yeah, oh, story. okay. Right. We moved on from your really good chewy impression. Right, okay. Um, so <laughs> we've got a job where you can work from home. Yes. On your own or with someone else. It's down to you. Okay. Okay. Um, and it pays quite well. 
Would you be interested in said opportunity? I'd, I'd want to know what the job is first. Thank you very Condom much. Condom tester. Oh, God. Right. What, what, what would you have a problem with that for? Hundred pounds for it. What a day? Well, for a go. Just for one wank or one one intercourse. One intercourse. Right. One intercural moment. Moment. <laughs> one <laughs> intercural moment in time. <laughs> I was going back to you. This is my moment. <laughs> this is my intercural. So moment basically, you just have to do a <laughs> or a or an in and out, in and out, in and out, and then tell them how the condom was felt. Yeah, and it's because they're, they're trying to get rid of this perception where. Um, 17% of people that won't wear condoms say it's because they have no feeling when they've got one on. Put it over your face then. Say, Put it on your penis. I, I would say anybody like that that says, well, you can't feel it, just slam it in a car door, tell me if you feel it. Right? Haven't they been doing like ultra thin condoms for decades? For a long time, yeah. But people are still saying oh, it's this conception of, you know, they're getting Men, the cheap ones. It? So yeah, it is, it is men saying it, but they're, they're trying all these different ones to try and make it, you know, easier and more pleasurable to have sex with a condom. To be safer. Okay. It's not, not rocket science, is it, really? It's been going around for, for bloody decades. Well, it can't, yeah, but this is trying to entice people to try them and stuff. Well, I think what you, they need to probably do is go, um, there's this condom here, mm -hmm. and I've got this, or I've got this castle prod. Which would Ooh. you rather have? Would you rather You've put gone this, on a very specific kink there. Would you <laughs> rather put this, put this condom on? To protect yourself from sexually transmitted diseases, pregnancy, unwanted pregnancy, etc., etc., et or would you like me to zap the bell end of your penis? Once again, very neat <laughs> fetish. Yeah, and I'm not saying no. That's all from the buzz this week. Yeah, um, I don't have anything to say about that. So, um, yeah, thank you, Frank. Uh, stick around because coming up, we have game of the week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we are playing Lazy Susan's Question Roulette. And this is one for our local bike rack. It's Spike. So off you pop. Get your little cycling shorts off and your crampons. And cycle away. Game of the Week. So the rules of this game are Mike has got Lazy Susan's Roulette, he's going to spin it, I'm going to answer questions, I'm going to answer them, then it's going to be the end. Are you ready? I'm ready, are you ready? I'm ready. Good, I'll spin it. Soundtracks. You... What? Oof. <laughs> for, for which of these movies did John Williams not produce the score? Jaws, Chandler's List, Schindler's List, Chandler's List, <laughs> Chandler's List. I oh. wanna go to Chandler's List. Uh, that's inappropriate. <laughs> uh, well, we'll be cloud, <laughs> don't you worry. So, Jaws, Schindler's List, or Pirates of the Caribbean? I'm gonna say Schindler's List. Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, okay. Very wrong. Nineties. In 1995, oh, now I'm gonna struggle with this one because you've been working. Which Swedish band had a hit in 1995 with Cotton Eye Joe? It was the Rednecks. Did you enjoy that? It was Billy Cyrus. I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you go from Cotton Eye Joe? It was the Rednecks. Did you know Cotton Eye Joe was an STI? Oh, 90s again. Quilloquilly. Quilloquilly. Known as I Get Knocked Down. 
Tub Thumping was a song for which British band in 1997? I'm gonna knock down, but they get up Chumba Wumba. Wumba Wumba. Chumba Wumba. Wumba Wumba. Wumba Wumba. They sound um, Wumba Wumba. Wumba Wumba. Who famously threw a pint of bitter in some politician's face at the Brit Awards. Mm -hmm. mm. Was that the same year that Jarvis Cocker um, punched Michael Jackson? Oh, he didn't punch Michael Jackson. <laughs> he no. went on stage and waggled his bottom when Michael Jackson was doing Earth Song. Uh, the preposterousness ah. of the performance. Ah, 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 ah. Mm -mm. Like Pavlov's dogs in the in the gallery. <laughs> sounds like sounds like someone's in pain in the gallery. <laughs> pop and rock, rock and pop, pop specs. What was the first single to be released from Gwen Stefani's album? Gwen Stefani's album. Yes. Gwen Stefani's album. <laughs> so was that the question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the first single to be released from Gwen Stefani's album? Which album? Her first the, the one? First one. Her first one. Um, a Hollaback Girl, I think. No, it's What You Waiting For. Oh, what's someone going? No, I don't. <laughs> You're thinking about the bananas one. Yeah. This shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Yeah. I don't know what tune you were thinking of, but yeah. Rock and pop again. In 2009, so this is modern music for you, which Rage Against the Machine song prevailed against the X Factor winner Joe McKeldry from achieving the number one? Uh, was it, I think it was like a girl's name. Okay. Barbara. Barbara Ann. I don't know what it was. Barbara Ann, bar, Barbara Ann. Barbara. That was the Beach Boys. Um, it was Killing in the Name. Oh, it wasn't a girl's name at all. No. I remember the circumstances, I don't remember the time. Home that tune. Because I know how much you enjoy these ones. Don't know it. You don't know it. Don't know it. So rather than do one where I do a you and pretend to know it and I get it completely wrong. No. No, I'm just going to say no to, to stop the agony. I don't know it. I don't know it. It was Skater Boy by Avril Lavigne. It was indeed, yes. Yeah, Avril Lavigne. Lavigne. I don't know why I have to do that in a, a, a southern accent, but I do. I don't know if she's from Canada. Rock and pop again. Which band originally wrote and performed the song Valerie? Valerie, no, not that one. Call on, call on me. Um, the Zootons. It was the Zootons. Boom. Well done, you. Well done, you. I had the wrong song in your head, but you got the right band. Bet your head in the game. Get your head in the game. And Breaking Free, a song from which 2006 musical movie popular with people of a certain age? Was it a high school musical? It was. <laughs> You're not a person of a certain age, Lee. I'm breaking free! I always thought they were singing about being in the woodworking shop. Huh? I'm soaring, filing. It would taste that, didn't it? Hum that tune. Mm 
<laughs> Beautiful by Christina Aguilera. Yeah. It's got an amazing vibe. Every day is so beautiful, then suddenly it's hard to pee. Nineties. Which American? No, I'm not. Oh, you can't pick and choose, Mike. I think you'll find I can. Which band had a hit in 1993 with Breakfast at Tiffany's? And I said, what about Breakfast at Tiffany? She said, I think I'd rather have my breakfast. Um, no, she said, I think I remember the film, and as I think, I recall, we both kind of liked it, and I said, well, that's what we've got. I was only ten when that song came out. Deep Blue Something. It was, but the Deep Blue what? Deep Blue Something. Death that was the name Death. of the band. Okay. You think I could peak your rage? <laughs> well, hum that tune. I don't know. Scrub is a guy you get did it. Sometimes known as a buster. Is it um no scrubs by TLC? It's How You Remind Me by Nickelback. Oh, very similar. Very similar to key change melody. Yeah. Sometimes known as a buster. Always thinking about what he wants. Just sits on, on his fat. So, no. It's the 90s. I don't want no spurs. I'm not even bothering with that one. Join us after this break. Because if you haven't had enough agony, you're going to have even more, because it's that science that is. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time we learn something interesting. In that science, that is. That science, that is. So today we're learning about these lovely little things. Condoms. Condoms. Mm -hmm. So yes, because we, we talked about becoming a condom tester. Yes. And then as part of me, I was wondering, how would you test a condom? So I, th I thought we would do some testing of condoms. Okay. Okay. We have different brands. I have a brand called Wednesday, not named after the Adams Family character. I have a... I have a... I have a... Jorex. Oh. Jorex. <laughs> Jorex, yeah. So I thought we would compare and contrast. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to, to contrast the, the the ease of putting them on a peen. A okay. huge. So so what I need to do is I, I need to we need to create a, a a phallic member. Do we? So so we have some instruments to help us with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So you have a, a cucumber. I do indeed have okay. a cucumber. Which is quite a lengthy cucumber. It has girth and it has length. It has. But do you know what the cucumber is missing when you're thinking about it as a peen? A testicle. No, no, not testicle. A foreskin. I'm thinking of a head. It's very just... A smooth. bell end. Bell end. So we need to give it a bell end. Do we? Yeah. So um, before the show, I asked you to pick your mushroom head. Um, and you picked a large one. Very large. You picked a very large one. Um, or you could use... I've also given you a giant sucker. So if you wanted to use this instead, you could use a sucker. That's like a little chef. It does look like a little chef. A chef hat. <laughs> Which would one? Like to do? <laughs> I don't know why it's Irish. Um, <laughs> I'm going to use the lolly. You're going to use the lollipop. Okay, so we have to need, unwrap the lolly. I need to unwrap it and gently sound your, your cucumber. It's going to put my cucumber down. Yes. I'm going to use my mushroom because I've got a more reasonably shaped mushroom for the, for the mushroom head. Okay. And, and so to do that, I'm just going to get this and, and just pop it down at the... The, the eye, I'm going to say, of the cucumber. So it's going through. Do I just stick this down? Just, yeah, sound the cucumber with your lolly. 
Oh, juice spurted <laughs> out. Well, there's mm. words there. <laughs> so before you knew what we were doing, you stuck the cucumber in your mouth as well, didn't you? Yes. So yeah. Not advisable if it is a partner that you have. Look uh, <laughs> at that. <laughs> that a partner that you have never, you don't really know. Okay, for, for a casual encounter. But I always say if, if you're having an open and honest conversation about that, then that would be down to you. Um, so I now have a mushroom head. How on lovely. My cucumber. No, I'm not going to do it. Um, so now we're going to pop a condom on it. Pop a condom. Now, do you have a technique you use when you're putting on a condom? Um, I don't use them because I, I don't need them. Because you don't have sexual intercourse. Because, because I um, don't have any genital, genital alias. What are you saying? What? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I haven't had the need to use a condom for many, many, many years. Okay. Because you don't have sex. Um, so, because this is quite a, a large head, I'm going to have to stretch my condom over the head. And I just broke its head off. Oh, no. I've just damaged my partner for not being gentle Oh, enough. no. That's so, a hospital visit. That is a hospital visit. My, my, my sounding has come out the bottom, and so yeah, oh, I might have to use the lollipop no. as well. I think it's... Right, that'll do. Okay, so you just want to unroll the condom over the top like that. I would imagine you're the type of you're the type of person that would put them in your mouth and roll them on with. I your was mouth. going to do that, but I, I, it's not advisable for TV. Uh, okay, so yes. I just roll yeah. the head roll it down. over the top of the. Yeah. Oh, if I put that on inside out. I put it on inside out. Okay. You want the little teat at the top. You want a teat at the top. Yes. That's what I have done. Okay. So you've got a, a bit at the top and then the reservoir. It needs it needs to go all the way down the shaft. Oh, okay. All right. Because otherwise you've just got the head covered and that's not going to give you much spillage protection, shall we say? Oh, baby. Oh, baby, is it good for you? So, so mine's not gone all the way down the cucumber. I must have an extra large commendium. Oh, yeah, so if you have a look, yeah, yours has gone a lot further than mine. It has, look at that. Maybe if I, maybe if I try and get some of the teat down as well. Um, no tearing. No tearing, they're quite strong condoms. Oh yeah, okay, I can get some down there. Oh. <laughs> So, yeah, so they, they both do the same pretty much thing. How, what does your smell like? Condom. Because sometimes they have a, a very off-putting smell. Yeah, like that kind of plasticky... Is, are these lubricated? Do they come with yeah, the, lube the, on them? A little bit of lube to make them easier, because if they were dry, they wouldn't... They wouldn't oh, no. no. Yeah, mine smells quite nice. Mine smells a bit tuna fishy. How would you rate the smell out of ten? About a four. Four. You see, I'd give this a good what? Good seven, eight. Yeah. Okay. So, so we know that it, it will go on, and it's it's easy to apply. Hmm. Now we're going to see how big they'll go. Ugh. And what I want to do? I know you hate mushrooms. That's why I did it. So you can put that one down now. Strangely attached to it. Put it down. What does it taste like, Lee? I'm not, I don't want to put <laughs> the name in my mouth now that I've, it's had a condom on it. Taste the condom. <sighs> I thought you were about to, you are too. <laughs> okay, taste out of 10. Doesn't taste of anything. Okay, I'm going to mind a taste. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, okay. if this doesn't get us a, an NTA award, I don't know what will. <laughs> Might get us a cease and desist. Um, so I've also... Have you not opened it yet? Sorry, no, I was too busy ramming the condom in my mouth. <laughs> what do I do now? So now you've got, you want to undo your, your condom onto yes. your pump. Okay. Okay, so it's unravelled. Okay. All the way to the bottom of the base of the... Well, I'd say just over the tip, so you're going to get quite a bit of um, an overhang. Oh, okay. 
Right. And I want you to just pump furiously so we can see how big it goes. Are you sure this is a science thing? Or are you just like doing something pervy for... Oh, mine went... You see, you, you need to make sure you've got a good... Mine did a little queef. <laughs> you did a queef. Have you got the base of it on your fingers? Because I've got quite a bit of, of lead there already. Yours is very chody. <laughs> Mine doesn't seem to want to. Um... So you just you have to you have to wank the pump for it to go up. <laughs> this looks wrong. <laughs> I don't want to. What is this? <laughs> so it's quite a lot in there, isn't there? Yeah. I want to keep doing it, keep going. So they're very strong, aren't they? I don't want it to pop. So you know when people say they don't fit me? Yeah. So you hear all those, those people go, oh no, I can never get them to fit me. It's like, I'm not being funny, but unless you're part elephant, that's going to... That's, that's a more wide on, enough. isn't it? Huh? It's a wide on. That's a very wide on. That's actually quite, com oh, quite comfortable. So they're, they're quite, you know, they're quite strong. Getting quite big. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <sighs> that was the whole point, wasn't it? Just the doing that, <laughs> just so they could pop it and scare me. Oh. It's gone. It's gone. But yeah, so they're quite they're quite strong, quite st stretchable. Yeah. And um. Oh, that made a very satisfied squelch when I pulled it. But yeah, that's science, that is. That's science, that is. Marvellous. So yeah, that was educational. It was indeed. And you know what, we're talking, you know... If you want to dip your wick, put a condom on. We're going to go and play out, make sure you're wearing your wellies. Is that what they say? A prophylactic. On your I penis. don't like the word prophylactic. Have you got a prophylactic? No, it's a regular dick. <laughs> <laughs> condom. Well, that was lovely. That was entertaining and informative. So thank you for that. Yeah. What are you going to do with your cucumbers now? Are you just going to take them and shove it up your ass? Sidewards. Sidewards. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, well, that's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media at the Cud TV on all the usual places. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again soon. Bye. Bye. What was that look for? <laughs> Did you <still> look? <laughs> you come with juice. I wasn't wearing a condom either. <laughs> That's juice, is it? Oh, it's juice. <laughs>